Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we are on to week 5 of our AE501 class. So with that being said, let's just jump right into the roadmap. So uh, here in week 5 we are continuing our discussion on uh, vector calculus from week 4. And remember week 4 we looked at vector differential calculus. Now in week 5 we're just going to look at vector integral calculus. So instead of taking derivatives, we're going to be taking integrals. So let's start off that discussion with um, a pretty classic discussion of uh, what is known as a line integral. And again, this is just an extension of the classic idea of a normal integral, but we are going to extend the domain of integration to be a parameterized line instead of just being the, the x-axis that we've done in the past. Um, with this definition of line integrals in place, we are then going to extend that idea to talk about um, potential functions and also what's sometimes referred to as the fundamental theorem of calculus applied to line integrals. And this also leads to a discussion of path independence and conservative vector fields and things like that. But again, I won't spill the beans too much. I'll let everyone watch this video. I think it's a nice extension to the idea of line integrals. Um, and we can extend this here to the idea of potential functions and um, conservative vector fields. So then, instead of just looking at a single line integral, maybe let's look at double integrals next. Again, you may have already seen this in a uh, undergraduate multivariable calculus class, so this is hopefully be a, uh, a little bit of a refresher. But then, now that we've discussed both line integrals and um, double integrals effectively, we can now look at uh, Green's theorem, which is a way to relate a line integral to a double integral. Um, so this is kind of an interesting theorem that's going to allow you to pick, uh, effectively pick your poison, right? Would you rather do a line integral or would you rather do a uh, double integral? You can kind of use Green's theorem in certain situations to pick between the two. Um, and then what I'd like to look at is, okay, earlier, remember, uh, we looked at how to parameterize curves. Um, that was back in week four. Now, how about parameterizing surfaces? Um, and remember, again, in week four, I think we did, in fact, let me just scroll back here, right? We talked about, yeah, parameterizing curves, and then we talked about how to get things like tangent to a curve. Well, now, if we're going to parameterize a surface, we now want to also be able to not just parameterize the surface, but be able to compute things like a surface normal vector at any given point of that surface. So this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how to do that. And that's going to actually allow us to step into how can we start talking about surface integrals of either scalar or vector fields and functions. So this is kind of interesting. And in fact, um, I think you, uh, maybe we should just hop into the homework because you'll see there's a problem related to this. And I think it's going to make a lot more sense what this is talking about if we can actually visualize this and work it through a homework problem. So that's the roadmap of where we're going. Um, let's jump over and take a look at the homework now. All right, so here we are with the homework. Uh, this week, again, it's pretty straightforward. So here's the first problem. It's pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to give you a curve C, which is actually broken up by two subcurves, a C1 and a C2. And this is really simple. Uh, just go ahead and evaluate the line integral here over the composite curve C, which is C1 union with C2. So again, this is pretty straightforward. Um, I'll let you play with it, and hopefully you can come up with a line integral uh, over this path. Um, the second one is, okay, now let's go ahead and look at a slightly more uh, in-depth or complicated parameterization. Um, but again, this is effectively uh, similar to the first problem, except now you're just going to have to visualize what does this C look like, this curve C look like. I'll give you the parameterization. You're going to have to plot it, but then just go ahead and evaluate a line integral over that curve. So again, problem two is just another line integral problem. Now problem three, we are going to um, combine not just a line integral, but we're also going to look at how you can evaluate a line integral through a vector field. So here's a vector field. You can consider this to be some type of force field in the xy plane. And now what we're going to do is first, I want you to just visualize what does this look like? Basically just draw a bunch of arrows all over the place to kind of show what does the force field look like at different xy locations. Then for part B, I'd like to consider, okay, we've got the force field defined over the XY plane. What if I want to take a very specific curve or a very specific path through this area? Um, and the path is described by this right here. Well, you can now calculate the amount of work that's done by moving along this curve here through the force field that we describe above. And again, I go through a very similar example of this in the lecture. So once you watch that video, I think this is going to make much more sense. 
And then in part C, I'd like to consider, okay, what if you go and take a more direct path between this starting point and this ending point? Notice here, the starting point and ending point in part B is the same as, a, uh, as in part C. Now the question is, do you actually have more work taking one of the two different paths? So I'll go ahead and let you play with this. This is actually very interesting. And um, yeah, I'll let, uh, I'll let everyone think about that a little bit. Okay, and then um, problem four is actually somewhat related to that idea. Um, this is the idea of line integrals in what are called conservative vector fields. And again, the, the adjective conservative in front of the vector field is gonna make a lot of sense once you watch that video. Um, but again, I'd like you to consider what I claim is a, uh, a vector field, which is hopefully conservative. And then um, I'll, I'll let you play around with this. In fact, maybe what I'll do is, is let me just, uh, I'll let everyone read through this. Um, the only thing that's interesting about this is you should be able to show in part A that F is conservative. And that has some implications for line integrals. You should then be able to find yourself what's known as a potential function here in part B. And now in part C, I want you to kind of pretend like you did not watch um, this video here. Pretend that you don't know anything about conservative vector fields and line integrals through them. And instead, all you did here in part C is just compute this by, by brute force. Compute the line integral over the curve C through this conservative vector field here. Okay, uh, just do that. Then in part D, you're gonna go ahead and compute the line integral using the potential function you found in part B. So hopefully you get the same answer and I'll let you think about why that is in either case and I'll let you decide which one is an easier way to go. Okay, moving on to problem five. Problem five is a pretty straightforward um, application of Green's theorem, which is gonna allow you to trade off either doing a line integral um, or a, or a uh, double integral. The only thing that makes this interesting is that um, if you look at this thing, it's pretty round. So maybe uh, something other than Cartesian coordinates might be useful here. But again, just be a little careful of when you're doing double integrals um, or closed line integrals over, um, yeah, over things that are described in polar coordinates, right? Okay, that's problem five. Problem six here is, this is kind of interesting. Um, I'm gonna, let's describe a 3D sphere. Uh, you know, it's given by this. And in this case, I think I'm gonna give you A is two. So it's basically, it's, it's a sphere with radius two, all right? Now for part A, just go ahead and uh, just have Mathematica visualize this. Although, use the, um, a plot three function. So this is actually kind of the wrong way to go about this if you think about this long enough, right? This is similar to the discussion we had in problem five where some surfaces are better described in spherical coordinates. But for part A, I'd like you to use Cartesian coordinates and just brute force your way through. You should be able to get this to work, but it's, it's not pretty. Now in part B though, let's go ahead and flip over to spherical coordinates um, and generate a spherical coordinate parameterization of this same surface with radius two. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone is going to come up with the same parameterization. To be honest, there are uh, there's there's an infinite number of parameterizations you can come across, but there's one pretty darn obvious one which I think everyone is going to use. So just go and describe that here in part B, and now in part C you can use this much easier parameterization and Mathematica's par parametric plot 3D function to visualize the same surface. So you should get similar results from part A and part C. Now where this gets interesting is in the next part, in part D, I'd like you to consider moving along the UV plane. So again, the, the parameterization that you're hopefully gonna come up with in part B, it's gonna have two independent parameters, U and V. Now, if you vary U and V according to these three situations, so in situation I, I'd like you to just hold V constant at this value and then vary U between zero and pi. And then for part, I, I, you kind of do the opposite, right? Hold U constant at this value and then vary V between zero and two pi. And then the last one for part I, I, I is just go along this red curve in the UV plane. And I'd like you to go ahead and plot and visualize what does the path along the surface look like in these three cases, okay? Um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll let everyone think about that. And also part E is kind of interesting. Um, 
we're going to assume that, you know, this is actually a really good way to describe spheres like the Earth, right? And let's ignore the fact that Earth is not actually a sphere. Um, again, spoiler alert, for those of you who take AE512 with me a little bit later, we will look at a, uh, a better model of the Earth rather than a pure sphere. But for this problem, let's just, uh, let's just assume it's a pure sphere. And we know that the Earth radius is not just two, but let, it, it, this is not going to matter in this case. Um, but I would like you to ask, uh, where would this location of Svalbard, Norway, be located in the UV plane? Um, and again, I will let everyone play with this. I'm happy to talk about this during office hours. It's kind of a fun problem. Okay, and then lastly, uh, for part s problem seven is I'm going to give you a vector field here. This is a three-dimensional vector field. We'll also go ahead and define a three-dimensional surface S, right? And now I'd like you to pram or sketch just the surface S. And also, I'd like you to parameterize it using two variables, u and v. That's going to allow us to then compute a surface normal to this surface here. And then, with the surface normal in place, we can evaluate some this, this it's called a flux integral sometimes. Um, but it's a surface integral, effectively, of this vector field across the surface S. And then, to help visualize what's going on, go ahead and plot the surface and the vector field F on the same plot. Okay, so that's the homework. Hopefully that gets everyone pushed off in the right direction. Like I said, I think this week is nice because it's a fairly turn the crank problem. And if you watch the videos and then do the homework, I think that's going to make a lot of sense. So happy to talk about this during office hours or just send me an email. We can chat um, other times. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.